This is the brand new iPhone 17 Pro Max. And if you've just picked up one of these or the regular Pro or the 17 or even the new iPhone Air, you're probably wondering how the heck do I get all my old information from my other iPhone onto this one? Well, in this video, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to go through the full setup process of the iPhone 17 Pro and migrate everything off of this iPhone 16 Pro. That's going to be your apps, your data, your photos, your iMessages, your Apple Watch, your Apple Wallet, your phone number, everything is gonna migrate from the old iPhone to the new one. And there are a couple of ways to do the actual migration, so I'll go over those, but I'll show you my preferred method. After going through the initial setup process, you'll have the option to decide which migration option you want to get your data from the old iPhone to the new one. There are two primary ways to do that. The first one is going to be a direct Wi-Fi migration where the two iPhones will essentially create their own Wi-Fi network to talk directly to each other and migrate all of your apps and data and information from the old one to the new one. This is a great option if you know you have a really slow internet connection because a majority of the data will migrate from phone to phone directly, but the applications will still need to download from the internet, so you will still need internet access. There are a few downsides to this method. For example, if you have a ton of local data on this iPhone to move over here, both iPhones will essentially be locked during the entire migration process. And I've seen this process take 30 minutes, 60 minutes, two hours. Some people have seen four hours or longer, or some people just get locked up during the process and go many hours without being able to use either device. And that's why my preferred method is going to be using an iCloud backup. If you restore from an iCloud backup, you'll have the ability to use the old iPhone for the initial little setup of the new iPhone, but then a majority of the migration will happen throughout the internet leaving your old iPhone available to use during that entire process. So even if your download takes an hour or however long, you still have access to your old iPhone to send messages, surf the web, watch videos, whatever you want during that time. And I've seen a lot less issues with that method versus the direct Wi-Fi method. The good news is if you're not paying for iCloud storage, you still have the ability to use this option to migrate to your new iPhone. If you do have iCloud storage, you're gonna wanna go into your iCloud settings, scroll down to iCloud, scroll down to iCloud backup, and here you're just gonna to wanna to make sure you have a recent backup of your iPhone. And if you don't pay for storage and still wanna do an iCloud backup to migrate to the new device, you're just gonna go down to general. You're gonna slide all the way down to the bottom to transfer or reset iPhone. You're gonna tap on get started right here for prepare new iPhone. This option is going to allow you to do a full backup of your iPhone to iCloud, which Apple will store for you for free for 30 days to do the full migration. And if you don't have an existing iCloud backup, you'll be able to start one right here. And with the iCloud backup completed on the old iPhone, we can now start the initial setup on the new one. We'll start by selecting a language and a location and our default appearance settings. Do you want it a default size? Do you want a large size? We'll stick with default for now. Now we can quickly set up this iPhone using some of the information from the old one. So we'll just go ahead and unlock that one and we see the option right here to set up the new iPhone using this guy. This will set up the Apple ID and some of the initial basic settings like Wi-Fi. We'll tap on continue. Now it wants us to scan the new iPhone with the old one to show that, yes, we do actually want to do this. I have control of both iPhones. So we'll just bring it over here and scan. Now it's going to say getting things ready. And here it's just trying to verify, are you setting this iPhone up for yourself or for, say, a child? We're going to set it up for me. On the new iPhone, you'll need to enter the passcode of the old iPhone to be able to decrypt the iCloud backup and the information that it needs. Now it's going to actually talk to the Apple server. So you see it connected to Wi-Fi. It knows my Apple ID. It's going to talk to Apple and actually activate this iPhone over the internet to make sure it's a valid device. It's not stolen. And now we're being told there's a software update for this new iPhone. I'm actually going to skip that for now and see if that works. Here you need to agree to Apple's data and privacy information. Click on continue. Now it wants you to set up face ID, which is super simple. You're going to pick up the device, hit continue. It's going to tell you what to do. You're just going to put your face in the camera and move it in a circle. So I'll just go ahead and line up the iPhone. I usually turn my head left and then spin it around. And that should be it. It says first scan complete. If you wear a mask a lot, you can do an additional scan while wearing a mask. We'll just go and do setup later in settings. And now face ID setup is complete. And here's the two migration options that I talked about before. Downloading from iCloud versus transferring from iPhone. And for all the reasons I mentioned before, we're going to choose download from iCloud. Now it's going to go through setting up your account. And this process is going to take a little while to actually complete. It's going to take five or 10 minutes. So while that is setting up, I want to talk to you about the Ostand Q3 Air from today's sponsor, Taurus. This case is perfect for everyday life. It provides a great design, enhanced protection, and versatility with the built-in 360-degree magnetic stand. The Q3 Air is built for anyone who wants a pocket tripod and tough protection in one. 
It has visible airbag corners inspired by Nike that act like shock absorbers for your phone. You can actually see the built-in impact resistance. It feels super solid without adding bulk. What makes it different is the 360 degree magnetic stand. Think of it as your tripod that's always with you. You can set it up on your desk for a video call, prop your phone up to watch a movie, or use it hands-free to shoot a vlog with the new iPhone 17 Pro. Of course, it also works with all of your MagSafe accessories and stands. I also like the outdoor lifestyle design. The anti-slip grip on the side means that it doesn't slide around in my hand, and it comes in some really sharp colors like Horizon Orange, Midnight Blue, Shadow Black, and Glacier Sprint. It looks as good on the trail as it does on a cafe table. For me, this is the kind of case that turns the iPhone 17 Pro into a little pocket studio. Daily shots, quick travel snaps, or just watching video hands-free, it makes it all easier. So if you want to check out the new Ostand Q3 Air, you can save using the links in the description below. And my thanks to Torres for sponsoring this video. Wow, that actually took less time than expected. So now we're given the option here to select or deselect certain things to migrate. I want to migrate everything, including my apps and data, my settings, my Apple Wallet, my Apple Watch, everything. So I'm just going to tap on continue. And you can see here that the old iPhone has initiated on its own an updated iCloud backup. So it's going to make sure it has the most up-to-date information for this migration possible. And this should just take a minute or two. On the new iPhone, you're given the option to do iPhone updates automatically in the future or just download them. I prefer to install them manually, so I choose download automatically. Do you want to enable location services? Yes, I do, so I can use maps and everything else. Do I want to turn on stolen device protection? This is a feature I suggest you read up on because it basically protects you if somebody steals your iPhone and knows your passcode. It doesn't allow them to change your iCloud password. The downside is if you actually need to change your password and you're not at home or at work or a specific location, then you might not be able to for like an hour. For the moment, I'm going to leave this turned off. At this point, the old iPhone is done. So you can tap done on the old iPhone and now you have the ability to use your old iPhone while you're continuing the restore process on the new one. So you can send messages, you can surf the web, you can do whatever you normally need to do. On the new iPhone, we're going to be setting up Apple Wallet. And the new iPhone is in the process of migrating my cards from my Apple Wallet to the new iPhone. And it looks like I don't even need to add the CCID security codes onto the new one. It's just migrating everything automatically, which is pretty cool. But if it doesn't, you might need to add that security code. The new iPhone is asking if you want to enable Apple Intelligence. So yes, we'll go ahead and set up Apple Intelligence. Do we want to summarize notifications? You can choose what to summarize. You can choose, do you want Apple Intelligence to summarize news and entertainment, communications, or other apps? You can select one or three or none. Uh, I'll go ahead and select uh, communications and social for the moment. And you can decide later too in the application settings. The iPhone's asking if you want priority notifications where Apple Intelligence will look at the information and try and figure out if it's a priority, and if so, bring it to the top of the list of your notifications. You can turn that on and see how that goes. Next up, the new iPhone's telling you a little bit about the camera control button that's on the right. So if you haven't had the camera control button before, it does a number of different things, including a quick access to the camera, it allows you to launch the camera app, it allows you to control the camera app, the zoom, the settings, and even use it as a shutter button to take photos. Apple Intelligence also has a feature called Visual Intelligence, which allows you to basically take a photo of something and have Apple Intelligence tell you more information about it, whether that's what kind of flower is this, what kind of dog is this, what business is this, that kind of stuff. It's asking if you want to use Siri, tap on continue. It may ask you to speak a couple of phrases so that Siri can better understand you. And then you also have the option to tap the home button or the home thing at the bottom to basically type to Siri. And now you'll walk through a couple of phrases to help Siri better understand you. Siri, how's the weather? Hey Siri, send a message. Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Hey Siri, get directions home. Siri, play some music. Now Siri setup is complete. We'll tap on continue. Emergency SOS is a feature to some newer iPhones. If you don't have that, there's a couple of different things you can do, including pressing these two buttons to get emergency services. There's crash detection on the iPhone and there's SOS via satellite. So if you're stuck with no cellular connection anywhere in the middle of nowhere, you can actually use a satellite connection to send messages for help. And you can read more about that information from Apple. Continue. And now the restore process is going to start. And you can see we are restoring from iCloud and in a moment we'll get the estimated time remaining but it doesn't matter how long this necessarily takes because this iPhone is still available. You can still do everything you need to with this iPhone because 
it's not locked up in a direct Wi-Fi transfer. So that's pretty neat. So we'll come back in just a couple minutes and see what the status of this restore looks like. So the iCloud download took about 17 minutes and now the iPhone is going through a reboot. And when it comes back up, we'll finish the configuration process. All right, the reboot has completed. So we are back to the configuration of the new iPhone. We'll go ahead and swipe up and Face ID is probably gonna ask for a pin code. It says restore has been completed. In all, it took about 20 minutes so far. There will be some applications that will download in the background, like I mentioned before, because the applications don't actually migrate from one phone to another. It re-downloads from Apple. And there will be some other application data and some other things that will download in the background as well. We'll tap on continue. And now it's trying to reconnect to the old iPhone. And this will allow us to transfer our phone number and some other information over. And now it's asking if we want to migrate the phone number from the old iPhone to the new one. We can do that later in the settings, or we can do that right now. We'll just go ahead and do that right now. It says, are you sure you want to transfer the number? Once you transfer it over, the phone will stop working on this one over here, which makes sense. We're going to transfer. Now it says to do the transfer, you're going to have to double click the button on the old iPhone to confirm. And now the transfer process is initiating from the old iPhone to the new iPhone. Now, if you're going from eSIM to eSIM like I am, it should be a pretty seamless process, something you're probably already familiar with. If you're going from an iPhone that has a physical SIM card to an eSIM on the new iPhone, what's gonna happen is the migration will happen and then the old SIM card will essentially be dead. You can't use it anymore. Now, many carriers around the world support this migration process with Apple. It's been used for many years at this point. So if it doesn't work with your carrier, it'll tell you it can't do the migration for you and you'll have to call your carrier to activate the new iPhone. And there we go. The transfer of the phone number from the old iPhone to the new one is now complete. We'll tap on continue. Here you're gonna get a quick walkthrough of some of the features in iOS 26, including how to personalize the iPhone, how to uh, use the new camera app, how to access menu options and controls and different things. And so just kind of swipe through and read those. And when you're done, tap on continue. And now the iPhone setup process should be complete. Other than that, all of the settings and configurations from your old iPhone is now set up exactly the same on the new iPhone. Here I get a pop-up asking if I wanna use this iPhone for location sharing. If this is gonna be your new primary iPhone, then yeah, this would be the one you use for your regular location for sharing, so tap on use. And if you go into the settings app, you'll see that the restore is in progress and there's an estimated 26 gigabytes of data to download. Again, all of that's gonna happen in the background so you can start using your iPhone as the apps become available and of course, use the old iPhone. Neither one of these is tied up and unusable during this process, which again, makes the iCloud Restore option a lot more versatile, in my opinion. It, it doesn't lock you out of the iPhone. It works in the background. It's just an overall more stable, better experience in my personal opinion. The old iPhone is now gonna pop up with this option to erase the old iPhone. This is for like, if you bought a new iPhone and you're trading this one in, you need to send this one back to a carrier or whoever. But I would wait, I would not do this right away. I would wait a couple of days, at least a week, or as long as you can before you send this one in, just to make sure everything is working as intended on the new iPhone. I would not erase this one until the moment you need to send it back in. So right now I would tap on not now. Later, you can go into settings, general, reset or transfer iPhone and tap here, erase all content and settings and do the same process to get it ready to send back. At this point in the process, I usually get a pop-up on my watch asking if I wanna migrate it from the old iPhone to the new one. I haven't got that yet, which seems a little bit odd, but I'll give it just a couple more minutes to see if I get that prompt. If not, we'll have to migrate it manually and I'll show you how to do that. In the meantime, if you wanna change out your background to use the new iPhone 17 wallpapers, you can go ahead and change your background, go ahead and lock it and tap on the lock screen, tap on plus, and you can use the one made specifically for iOS 26 or you can scroll down and choose the, the one specifically for your phone, for example, the 17 Pro. So I'll just tap on that and add and set as wallpaper pair. Now the 17 Pro Max has all my information, but it looks like the new iPhone, right? Because it has to look new, otherwise what's the point? Okay, so I still haven't got the pop-up for my Apple Watch, so I just open up the Watch app on the new iPhone and there's an option here to finish pairing. Let's tap that and see what happens. And it says unable to connect to Apple Watch. So something went wrong with the process of migrating the Apple Watch. It's not totally uncommon. So let's go ahead and set it up manually, I guess. So we'll just tap on OK for the moment. All right, so to unpair this Apple Watch, we'll go to the iPhone, open up the Watch app, go to My Watch, All Watches. Here we'll tap on that button and unpair Apple Watch. This says you'll need to repair it again to use it, which makes sense. So we'll unpair there. 
We'll keep the cellular plan if you have a cellular Apple Watch. Now you got to type in your iCloud password and the Apple Watch is unpairing from the old one. The unpairing process is going to take a little while just because the Apple Watch processor is pretty darn slow. So it's going to take a couple of minutes to finish that up. All right, so the unpairing process is now complete. On the new iPhone, let's remove this ghost watch right here. Forget this Apple Watch, unpair. And now we can add Apple Watch. We'll set up for myself and hold the Apple Watch to the camera. And eventually it'll scan. All right, so now it sees it. I wanna restore from backup. I wanna choose my Apple Watch. My most recent backup was today, 10.52. We'll use that one. Continue. And now it's going to start the pairing process, which like everything with the Apple Watch will take a couple of minutes. Agree to the terms, create a passcode for the Apple Watch, and you're gonna do that on your wrist. Yes, I know mine's upside down because that's just my preferred way to use it. You can change that in the settings. So type in your passcode. Now choose your text size options. I'll leave it at default and hit continue. This tells you that the iPhone and the Apple Watch will share some settings, including location. Tap on okay. Here you can add your personal health and fitness information and tap continue. Set up activity rings. Do you want activity rings? Yes, I do. Do I have a daily move goal? Uh, sure, let's put 900. Why not? Set move goal. Daily exercise goal, sure, 30 minutes. Daily stand goal, 12 hours. Get notifications about your health. Do you want noise notifications from your Apple Watch? If you're in an environment that is very, very loud, you'll get an alert on your watch saying, hey, it's too loud. Continue. Safety features, just like with the iPhone, emergency SOS and crash detection and some other things. Tap on continue. Cellular is ready on this watch because I do have a cellular setup on here already. Continue and here you can control the Apple Watch with one-handed gestures. It tells you how to use the wrist flick and the double tap. Continue. If you have an Apple Watch that has a depth meter, you can have that on or not when you put it inside water, like in a pool or whatever. Now it's going to sign into your Apple account on the watch. Do you want to use Apple Pay and add your debit and credit cards? You can do that now or do it later. If you do it now, you'll probably have to enter your security codes of each card. I'll just say later for the moment. And now the Apple Watch is syncing. And again, like everything Apple Watch, this is going to take a few minutes. You can tap on get to know your watch to get a little bit of information about it. Uh, but I'll just hit done and it'll alert you when it is fully complete. You can see that this uh, ring will kind of slowly fill up or unfill up or whatever it does as it progresses. Now, if it weren't for the Apple Watch failing to migrate, which happens from time to time, no matter which migration method I use, you know, this process would go just a little bit quicker, but either way, we're still migrating the Apple Watch to the new iPhone. It's gonna look and act and have all the same settings as it did previously because we restored the watch from a backup. Other than that, everything is transferred or transferring to the new iPhone. You can see the download progress in the settings menu. I still have 17 gigs to download, but again, this is better overall than having both iPhones locked up for the entirety of the restore process. Most likely you will have to re-log in to many of your applications because, well, that's just how security keys work on devices and applications. So you'll have to re-sign in using your password to existing apps. And that's everything you need to do to do the initial setup of your new iPhone 17, 17 Pro, 17 Pro Max, or iPhone Air, and migrate everything from your old iPhone to the new one. It's not a terribly difficult process. It can take a little bit of time and maybe you run into an issue with your Apple Watch or whatnot, but for the most part, it should go pretty smooth. But if you have any questions about the whole process of migrating, let me know in the comments down below. Now I'm going to be doing some other videos and comparing this new iPhone to some previous iPhone Pro Maxes. So if you're curious about that, definitely hit the subscribe button because that is coming soon. And if you're interested in this video right over here, you should definitely check it out because it's a good one. It is. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.